Welcome, guys, to Miss Puff Creative Corner. This is Claudette. Let me know if you could hear me, where you guys are tuning in from. I'm here in Orlando, Florida. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today we'll be creating these three lovely projects using the Sweet as a Peach bundle. I'm just pulling myself up, making sure I could see everything okay and hear everything okay. If you're there on the sidelines, come on in. Let me know where you're joining from. And then we'll get started here momentarily. Okay, so these are the three projects that we'll be creating. We'll create this um, box. It is a box that holds um, tea bags. And okay, so this could hold about four tea bags. Okay, so let's just open that up so you could take a look of the inside here. And so you could hold at least four little tea bags. So we'll be creating that one. Then we're going to be creating this fun full easel card. So when it lies down, it looks like this. And then it sits up, it could sit further back or closer up to the happy birthday. So we'll be creating that one. And just then we'll be just creating just a simple card. And I made uh, these birthday cards and you could always use a lot of birthday cards. So the products that I'll be featuring today is Sweet as a Peach. This is the bundle. And we call, when we say bundle, you get 10% off. It's usually a stamp set and the coordinating dies or the stamp set and the coordinating punch. So this is a Sweet as a Peach um, stamp set. And it's in the Claire Photo Palmer um, stamps. And if you're not familiar with that, you could really see, you could just see through those stamps. So it's easier for you, um, nice when you're stamping, you could see through and see where you're stamping. And then it comes with the coordinating die. So you get 17 pieces in here that helps you cut out some of your stamp images. So if you get that in the bundle, you save 10%. Also, the um, designer series paper that comes with that, you get 12 in a pack. And this is the designer series paper. And we have a special going on designer series paper. You get 15% off. And this is one of the packs that you could get 15% off on. And you, I'm just going to show you. It's You get six sheets with two designs on each side. So you're getting like 12 designs. So you're getting a total of 12 papers, okay? So I'm just going to show you the six sheets and the designs on either side. So you have floral prints and look at that beautiful stripes. You have polka dots on one side, floral. I love these stripes. So you get um, dots, um, 
floral on one side and different shapes on the other side. Well, I like this one has um, peaches on this side. And you have the floral images there. So this one is nice because you could stamp right on this one. You have your larger peaches. You have some polka dots there. And when they packaged um, Stampin' Up! packages um, the designer series paper, it comes with a little cardboard and they list the different colors that is within the um, prints. So you could match your um, designer series paper or printed paper up with the um, card stocks and the embellishments that comes with it. So what we don't want to do is create the basic card. Let's start with that first. So I'm just starting out with some white paper, white cardstock that is measuring eight and a half by five and a half. You're going to score it down the middle at four and a quarter. You're going to fold it down in half which is going to give you four and a quarter. So let's go ahead and fold that down. Just going to take my bone folder and give that a crease. Then I'm going to get my mats for it my layering top pieces. And I did a video, a previous video on how to um, create different mats. So when you're ready, um, you could just pull those out and see what kind of mats you want to use. So I just have these little templates that I have for my different mats. So on the black, that's gonna be this top layering piece. That's five and one eighths by three and seven eighths. Then my designer series paper piece is going to be four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. So we're going to go ahead and glue those together and glue that down to the base of our card. So I'm just going to get um, my multi-purpose glue. Just gonna bring in my silicone mat to protect my surface area. I'm gonna add some glue behind of my designer series paper. Then I'm going to go ahead and just let's see, center that in the middle and leave the try to get the uh, even amount of edges all around. And when you're working with multi-purpose glue, the wet glue it's nice because then you have time to move your um paper around and it doesn't dry that quickly. So next I'm just going to glue that down to the top, the base of the card. This is really a fun summer set. And then I'm just gonna make sure my pictures are facing the correct way and make sure I have an even amount of the white. Okay. 
Next, I'm gonna bring in a strip of um, black cardstock. And this is measuring roughly three quarters of an inch and four and a quarter of an inch. So what we're gonna do is some um, embossing, some heat embossing. And we're gonna get the word happy birthday from our stamp set. So I'm using the happy birthday on this one. I'm going to bring in my Versamark ink. Take my embossing buddy and just clean this off. That helps to prevent any static and keep the powder, embossing powder to stick to the actual ink, what you put down and not around it. So I'm gonna bring in my Versamark ink and then we're gonna go ahead and stamp up that image. And this I'm gonna stamp that more to the right of my paper. You know what, no, I'm gonna stamp it more to the left. And just hold that down for a couple seconds. And then I'm gonna bring in my white embossing powder and sprinkle that over this. Just gonna put a coffee filter to collect the excess powder. While we're doing that, I'm just gonna put on my heating tool so that could warm up. And then we'll just sprinkle that white powder right over that. And this is so nice with the white on top of the uh, black. Sorry, my heating tool is falling down. All right, so let's put this on the side. And if you have any excess um, powder around your images, you could take a little, um, paintbrush and just dust around it okay but this one came out pretty clean so next what we're just going to do is bring in our heating tool and i'm going to bring that up for those of you who have not seen this yet and that just melts that powder right on to the ink i don't know if you could see the changes it's just getting like a bright shiny white and you don't want to hold it on too long directly on there because it could burn your um image and you could also you probably sh should be doing it from the back less chances of burning that and then you just want to look at it closely make sure that it's nice and shiny throughout, okay? All right, let me just put my tool away. All right, so I am gonna bring in my Taylor Tag Punch and just uh, create a little
hashtag. Um, let me see which side I wanted. It, yeah, this side. Little tag cut here. You could also use your scissors for that this part too as well. Right. I didn't cut well. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. All right, so next what we're gonna do is go ahead and glue this down here. And I'm just gonna take this over right up to the edge of that black layer. And stick that down. Next, what we're gonna do is bring in one of our peaches. Just want to get a scrap piece of paper and show you here with our peach. And then we also have the leaves to go with it. So we're just going to bring in the stamp for that peach and this leaf right here. And I am going to use um, Calypso Coral for the peach and a green that we call old olive. And it's nice when you're using your photo palmer stamp, so just bring down, bring in a little padding, a little cushion that goes underneath that. It usually helps you to get a better image print out. So let's ink up our stamp. And this is the peach. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stamp on a white piece of paper. Next, what we're gonna do is bring in the leaves on the little stem, get our old olive ink. And then we'll stamp that image. I'm going to use the um, dies to cut this out, cut these out so you don't want to stamp them too close together. So next what you're going to do is just go ahead and take your dies, line them up. See, they have this little nipple right here for the peach, and it matches right there. So you want to line that up together. And then you want to line your leaves up together too. And your little stem. You could use some craft tape to hold that down so it doesn't move. And then, then you run that through your die cutting machine and cut those out. So once you get that and you get your two images, let's see, you want to go ahead and glue those together. So you're going to get your two images, you're going to take a little bit of glue, put it to the back of your peach, and then glue your image down just like that. All right, so then we're going to pop that up with some dimensionals. And 
and I'm just going to add three of the larger dimensionals. We have the regular size dimensional, and then you have some mini dimensionals. And then I'm just going to add this right to next to the happy birthday. And if you want, you could add a little twine to that. But I think the peaches and the designer series papers is so pretty that you don't really need to add any extra sequence or ribbon. And then you could also stamp in the inside. Let's see, I, I'll stamp have a peachy day. And I'm just gonna use this uh, Calypso Coral to stamp have a peachy day. To be careful with what, when you say and have a peachy day. Oh my gosh. That the correct words come out of your mouth. All right, so I'm just gonna stamp have a peachy day. Right here in the middle. Hold that for a few seconds. And there we have our first card. Or our first project, I should say. So let's move on to the second project. So what we're going to make next is our fun fold card. Fun fold easel card. So it opens up and you could sit it back this way, or you could sit it right here at the happy birthday. And this is nice because what I really love and a lot of people like about Stampin' Up! is the color coordination. So you could look how nice this goes together, the stripes and the, flower, the flowers. Really nice with all those colors. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. So we're going to start with the base of our card, and that is going to be in the Calypso Coral. And it's the same measurement, eight and a half by five and a half, score it down at four and a quarter, uh, uh, fold, fold it down at four and a quarter, and then we'll fold it again. So let's go ahead and do that. I have to bring my scoring tool out for this one. And let me see, I'm just trying to put my powder away so I don't make a mess. All right, so now what we're going to do is score this or fold this in half like we did on the previous card. Okay, so that's score down, fold it down at four and a quarter. Then I am going to bring in my trimmer, which has a scoring section on there. And I just want to get the score section here. All right, so we're going to score this. Let me just see with my measurements. Two and one eighth. So you're going to pretty much half the other, like the four and a quarter, you're going to fold that down in half, one side down in half. And 
All right, so let's go over that again. So you're gonna fold your paper in half. Then you're gonna take one of that half and then you're gonna fold it in half again. And that's gonna create that fun fold there, okay? These projects are just showing you how, you know, it's just displaying the beauty of designer series paper. If you like designer series paper, and these are just some beautiful designer series paper. I just love the colors, the color combination they have together. All right, so we're gonna start with the outer pieces. So we're gonna have some layering here to do. So our designer series paper, I'm using the stripes and this is measuring one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. So you're gonna need two of those pieces. And then the bottom layer is the white and that's measuring two inches by five and three eighths. All these measurements are in, um, inches okay so what we're going to do is go ahead and put our layers together and get my multi-purpose glue and let's go ahead and Kind of make sure again, once again, our edges are even all around. And with this one, it doesn't matter if you don't get it as even because they have the white stripes in there. So let's do the other one. And the glue that I'm using is the glitter art glue. I like the glitter art glue because if it seeps out, you know, especially when my hand get heavy handed with the putting the glue on, it does not dry tacky. So it doesn't stick. So if it dries tacky, you can only work kind of stick on other things. So. All right, so now that we have those pieces glued together, we're gonna go ahead and glue that to the base of our card. So we're gonna take and glue that one there. And then we'll glue the other one on these, this flap. And also I, besides getting the, um, Calypso coral edges, even I want to make sure I ball it and make sure these layers are sort of even too as well. So next what I'm going to bring in is a circle and a scallop. And then I am using the um, layering circles. So we have some dies that ha call layering circles. So you have the plain circles and then you have the scallops to match it. So I'm using these two right here.
Okay, so what I'm going to do is stamp have a peachy day. I'm just going to make sure my stamp is clean and I am going to bring in the olive green. Bring in my foam pad, and because we're using the photo palmer stamps. Okay, so we're gonna use olive green, and we're gonna ink that up. And I'm just going to uh, say have a peachy day right here to the left side. Okay, so that came out pretty good. Let me go ahead and clean my stamp off. Okay, so now that we have that, I am going to take the white layer and glue it on top of that calypso coral or orange looking color layer and i'm going to add some multi-purpose glue to the back of that you just get a hint of a little scallop around the edges okay so next what I'm going to do is bring in a couple peaches to add there so I showed you already how you stamp those up. I'm just gonna go ahead and fix this one right here. So you just wanna organize how you want them to lay here. I'm gonna just add some glue on this edge right here and add it just a little wonky there then i'm gonna take this one add it this way and i'm gonna pop that up with some dimensionals just get some dimensionals and add to the back of this peel off the back of those Make sure your dimensionals are not peeking out. And let's see. Let's turn it like this way here. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and 
fix the inside of our card. So this inside layer for you to write your note is five by three eighths and four and one eighths. So let's just um, go ahead and lay that down. So I'll just add a little bit of glue around the edges them in the middle. And let's just add this down. Then we're going to add this layer here in the inside. This lower layer, and so you're going to, I'm going to add two layers, and that's going to help it, this to stand up. Okay. So I'm adding this layer and this layer, and it's the same um, dimensional dimension as these top layers here. Which in this, again, is one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. And then the white piece is measuring two inches by five and three eighths. We're gonna glue those together. And sometimes you just hate to cover up the other side. I just like that blue with the white dots. It's so pretty. So let's go ahead and add that to our white layer. bring our card back in. So just given that additional layer on top of this white layer, just add a little height, dimensional height to it. So we're gonna add, get our multi-purpose glue again and just add that to a lower half of that white paper. And then we just line it up to the white. See, and then that stands up like right there like that. So now we're going to see where we want to place our little tag. Okay, so when you're gluing your tag on, you don't want to glue it on top of this. You just want to glue it to this layer right here, this panel right here. All right, so you just want to put it and see how you want to delay. And when I turn it around, I'm just gonna add glue, just not past the half. Okay, just right at that sentiment cut, that's the cutoff right there, okay? So we're just gonna add some multi-purpose glue here. So you're just kinda eyeballing where the cutoff is for your sentiment. And let's see, so I'm just gonna add that right here. So you wanna make sure you don't have any glue on this side because it's gonna catch on that side. And that's the nice thing about using the um, glitter art glue. If, it, it, if you get glue out here, it's gonna try clear and not tacky, okay? Like the tombow gets tacky. So it won't catch on that side. Okay, so now that it's done, what we're gonna do is, let's see, we're gonna add, let's get this sentiment out. And I'm using our, this card stock that is in our balmy blue. And I'm gonna get some black ink, Momento black ink. And I am gonna stamp happy birthday on that.
just want to make sure that my stamp is clean okay so it's like when you're doing these live, you have stuff all over the place. It's like, where did my stuff go? <laughs> and it's usually sitting right in front of your face. Anyway, so I'm going to bring in my, um, I'm going to use my silicone mat as a cushion underneath. I don't know what I did with the other cushion. But, and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp happy birthday. And remember, guys, it's always two sides to your cardstock. So if you make a mistake on one side, just flip it over and do the next side. So let me see if I get happy birthday straight and then in the middle and just hold that down for a few seconds. Okay, so not bad. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that up with some dimensionals. Let's see if I find, let's see where, All right, so we're gonna pop this up, put some dimensionals to the back of that. Get one more piece if it'll fit. And then we'll bring that in, pop the backs off of it. And then we'll just add it on this side. So you add it to that. And then if you want, they, you could sit up closer that way too. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and finish, put on the final touches. And we're going to add some leaves and some flowers to that and some bling. And let me just show you on... All right, so once you're stamping your leaves, so we're gonna stamp this leaf right here. It comes as one whole piece, and then you have the um, die that cuts it out, and then you have these three flowers right here. And um, you have it on one stamp, and then what? when you cut it, the die out is one full dies, but they cut those out individually. So I'm just gonna ink this up with the old olive green just to show you how it looks. So that's how it will come out. And then um, we're gonna get some of the flowers and stamp those out. Let's see if I put those back. Okay, so there we go. So these are the flowers that come on one stamp. So what we're gonna do is get some Calypso Coral and go ahead and stamp with some Calypso Coral. If I find what I did with my Calypso Coral. There we go. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and ink these flowers up with the Calypso Coral. Okay, that one didn't come out that great. 
Let's try that again. All right, better. So now they have a little piece for the insides of your flowers. That little piece right there. So what we're gonna take is a, a light brown, we call that crumb cake. Brown family, so we call that crumb cake and then we're just gonna hit that up and just do that in the middle. So I don't know if you could see the difference how your flower looks now. Okay, so you just, Hit it up with some um, crumb cake. And that look at the difference with the inside of those flowers, how it makes the flowers come to life. Okay, so what you're gonna go ahead and do, again, you're gonna take your dies, And put it over that and run that through your die cutting machine. And then you'll get these pieces. And let's see, so I am going to just, since that's some dimensionals there, I'm just gonna stick that underneath. I'm gonna add a little glue here to the stem, to the top, and then to the bottom of the stem. And then I am just gonna stick it right underneath here somewhere. Then I'm gonna take those flowers and glue them down hold them down with some dimensionals. See if I have to find some full sets of dimensionals. All right, so we're gonna take some dimensionals and add to the back of our flowers. Let me see if I could take my take your pick tool to pick those up because these nails are just not working. So um, we'll put that to the back of that, take the backing off, and then we're gonna add one flower right there. See, that's where I'll take your pick tool comes in handy. Not only for small objects, but when you have these nails on. All right, and then we're gonna add one right there. Then we're gonna get a little bit of sequence. And these are the artist, artistry blooms adhesive back sequence. And these are some of the other colors that comes in that kit. So you get four different, four sheets, four different colors. I think the blue matches perfectly. So now I am just gonna take off some of those sequins and add them to our card. And I am using the Take Your Pick tool. It has putty on one end and they have different tools on the other end, like your stylus, a spatula. And then we'll add one more right here. See, and that's it for our second project. 
and you have room to write right up here to the top. Isn't that fun? All right, so the last project we're gonna do is with our box. Just move some of this stuff out of the way. And I, if I, like I mentioned before with these photo palmer stamp pieces, you have to be careful that you don't sit anything on top of it because then you'll be missing your pieces. You go crazy looking for those little buggers. Okay. All right, so we'll be creating this piece right here. This is a tea, it holds four tea bags in here. All right, so let me get out my measurements so I could give you those measurements. Just clean some of this stuff out of the way. All right, so you're gonna need a piece of cardstock. I am using one of our new in colors. We have five colors, new colors each year. And this one is called Pale Papaya for the base of our box. I just love this color. Okay, so this is measuring three inches by eight and three fourths of an inch. So what I'm going to get out is our scoring board to do this one instead of the trimming, our trimmer and which has a scoring tool. I am going to get this one here out. And this is called our Simply Score Tool. Make sure you can see okay and there's no glare from the light. Let me just pull that down a little bit. Okay, so you could see and the glare is not there. Okay, so we're gonna put it up to the longer side which is the eight and three fourths side and we're gonna go ahead and do some scoring. So I'm using the smaller point for our stylet and I am going to start at three inches, then three and three fourths of an inch. Then we're going to go all the way down to six and three fourths of an inch. and then seven and a half inches. Then let me just not put my paper where you're gonna need, cause since we're doing some scoring, then you're gonna need two smaller pieces of paper. And this, these are going to create your accordion pieces on the side, your accordion, the accordion pieces here on the side. So you're going to need two of these. And these are measuring four inches by three inches. So you're going to put it up on the four inch side and then you're going to score every half an inch. So we're going to go a half an inch here one inch, one and a half inch, two inches, two and a half inches, three inches, and then three and a half inches. Okay, so you wanna do that to both of the sheets. I already did the other one. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and fold this, fold along the um, 
score lines. And you could take your bone folder and give that a nice little press. So what we're going to do is round out the top. That's going to be the top of our box, the shorter little half right here. I'm going to round those corners off. And this is our 3 -oh punch. It's nice because you could punch three different designs, but they have that corner rounder right there. So let's go ahead and put that in here and round this off. And let's do the other side. So that's going to be the top of our box. All right, so our accordion piece, what we're going to do is go ahead and fold. You're going to alternate the folding area, fold one way and then fold the other way. And then you want to give that a good press, okay, to make those seams nice and crisp. Then we're going to take some double sided tape. And then we're going to add some double-sided tape along this edge right here and then on this edge. You could use multi-purpose glue, the liquid glue, but I think it's much um, neater and less of a mess. I have glue here in my hand when you use the um, double-sided tape. So I'm just going to add this just in the middle of this. Let's see. Make sure it goes on straight. Let's see if it'll tear for me. And then we'll do it on the other side. Then I'm going to take my um, bone folder, give that tear and tape, double sided tape, a nice press. So it could stick on nice so it doesn't come up. And you're going to have your two side, like I said, I already did the opposite side. So this video could be a little shorter. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to um, take a piercing tool. And what we're going to do is take this, we're going to lift this up with a piercing tool, but I'm going to show you that you're going to lay this down right here on top of that. See this larger panel? is where our accordion, accordion folds are going to go. So you're going to take that along that side. You're going to take this piece off and then you're going to lay and as it bounces away from me. So you want these that mountain that's up. You want it not this way, but in this way with the, those looking up, you want them to go here because you'll hold much more. Okay, you hold the four tea bags if you put it this way you're going to hold less okay so we're going to put it this way and i'm going to go ahead and take my tape off my backing off of my double-sided tape let's 
see if that would come off without okay and then this overlap that I have here I'm just gonna fold that in so I am just gonna come here and butt this up to the edge of this panel if you guys could see and then I'm just gonna take my bone folder while this is open here and crease that down so we're gonna go ahead and take this one off too and do that on the other side as well but you know what let's do this side first so we'll have both of these sides done while it's open take my piercing tool lift that back and up and then we're going to go ahead and bring that right to the edge get that bone folder in there so you want it right to the edge and then to that seam this crease line there too as well so that's how it's looking so far so what we're going to do is go ahead and take the backing off of this one And anything lapping over, just fold it in. And we're gonna bring this up. Let's see here, I'm gonna press that down. I left the back end on this one. And then just bring that over. Again, we're just gonna try to line that up to the edges. see that and then I'm just gonna go ahead with my bone folder and press that down give it a nice little crease and help that to fold in to glue on so that's we have that one side already done so let's do the other side so we're gonna take the backing off if you guys are getting any creative value from this video go ahead and smash that like button please do leave a comment that would be greatly appreciated and then what we're going to do is press this down here then glue that back in onto the front And you could see if um, you use the uh, multi-purpose glue how um, messy that could be. All right, that's our box. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and decorate it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring out some uh, three pieces of designer series paper. If I find my other piece, there we go. Okay, so we're going to design, we're going to add designer series paper here, right here on this tab, and then right here to the top. So the measurements for those are. This for the larger square is two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. This one here is two and seven eighths by one and an eighth. And then this one is two and seven eighths by five eight. And those are all in inches. 
So that's what you need for your designer series paper. And what we're going to do is go, this, since this piece is going to be here, we're going to go ahead and round these corners out before I forget. So let's put it in our rounder punch, our trio punch. Okay, so we want it on this side here. All right. Before I do anything else, what I'm gonna do is bring in a magnet. So I have these little small little magnets. I got these from Amazon. I think they're, how small are these? Eight millimeter by one millimeter. And I got like a case with 150 in there. Let me just show you. And I'm going to get a glue dot. And these magnets are pretty strong. Let's separate that. I am going to get a glue dot and set my magnet in place. I'm gonna show you on the other box that I created. I forgot to put the magnet underneath the um, designer series paper, so it's sticking out. And I don't think that's attractive or it would hold securely. So I'm gonna put my magnet just about there. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is add this designer series paper to the top of that. So then I'm going to get my multi-purpose glue. Add some of that to the back here. And then stick that down. While I'm there, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this piece down. Add this right here, and you want an even amount of that pale papaya cardstock to show, and you want to line this up as even as you can with this other designer series paper. All right. So next, what I'm going to do is get the other p other magnet. All right. And what you're going to do is go ahead and snap that onto that one magnet. We're gonna take a glue dot, add it to the back of this, and go ahead and close this down so you could catch on that bottom piece. Make sure you close it down, let it just close nicely. And let's see if we pick it up without. Okay, so it stayed on. So what I'm going to do is add the designer series paper down here to cover that up. I add my multi-purpose glue to the back of this. and then add my designer series paper to that. Make sure my edges are nice and even all around. And also I'm gonna squeeze that glue dot. 
down. Or my magnet down, not my glue dot. And see, that's how our box would close in. All right, so what we're going to do now is just to design the box. And I am going to get some ribbon. So the pale papaya, all, all our five in colors, they have uh, like some beautiful ribbon to go with it. So they have this ribbon here to match the pale papaya. So I'm going to add some here to it. Make sure it's long enough for me to tie a bow. Okay, that looks long enough. So what I'm going to do is get my scissors and just trim the edge out a little bit. Make this a little longer here. Let's see. So next, what we're going to do is go ahead and finish designing that. So I use, I cut out some shapes right here. And um, this is like a tag shape and it's stitched around. And then this circle has this nice little stitching around the edges as well. And the, these here are from our Tasteful Label dies, And you get like 10 of these. These are really some beautiful, give you some nice little edging stitches around the edges. These are some nice little dies for your tags. You turn it this way so you could get a better look. And this color here, this cardstock color is in, in uh, always called Mango Melody. So I'm going to use that a little leaf and stem from the same set. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment sweet as a peach, but I'm gonna use the um, old olive green. And let's see if I find that sweet as a peach. Make sure that is clean. Bring in a mat or my silicone mat, and we're going to go ahead and stamp up sweet as a peach. Make sure it is straight. And let's go ahead and ink that up with our old olive green. Now, if I made a mistake on this one, I'm going to have to repunch this because the design is really not on the other side. So let's see if we get a clean image here. Okay, that came out pretty good. So I'm just going to add this to the back of this. I'm going to glue it on like that. So I'm going to add a little glue here. Glue this on. And I am going to add a little bit of dimensionals. 
alongside the bowl. That's going to help to keep that bowl. They could open the box and they won't lose the dough. And we'll just add that alongside of that. I'm just looking to see my other box where I glue that on. All right, so let's just pop the back off of this. And then we'll add that there. And then where is my little stem and leaf? I'm going to add this right back here. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this. And that is a little box. So let's open that up and then, um, and you could skip the part with the magnet. You don't have to put that part because the ribbon will keep your box closed. Uh, so let's see here. My tea bags are measuring, let's see, I wrote that down somewhere. It's measuring two and a half inches by three inches. So I had some perfect peach tea caffeine free so um that fits in there nicely so you could hold i would want to say you could hold four in here comfortably Let's see if i have one more to show you i'll steal from the other box here and then a fourth so those hold in there nicely. Close it down. I was like, what? My magnet don't want to stick. Okay, it's stuck. It is stuck. Maybe not. What's going on? <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. So you have a double closure. You have the magnet plus your um, ribbon and tie or bow. Double closure. That's my water bottle over there making that popping sound. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and trim those up. And this is the one that I created earlier and I did not cover up the magnet. Okay, but you know, you give this as a gift, I, that's not gonna stay on too well with the uh, glue dot. With that exposure like that. So let's go ahead and close this one up too as well. So that's that. Let's bring in the rest of our projects. And we have our easel card. And just our basic card. And this is so nice. Black makes a big difference in making your cards pop. And add in a little bit of white to that. So if you guys are interested in getting this kit in the mail, if you go over to my online store, anyone that purchased anything $50 and over, you'll get the kit. Just the, um, I cannot stamp any images. Um, 
I'll send you the pieces to put together uh, as well as the matching envelopes. You'll be able to make two of each of these projects and also send you additional thank you um, gift in the mail from me. You just go over to misspuffcreativecorner.com or you could email me at misspuff. And then you'll find the link at Miss Puff Creative Corner to shop on my online store. And then if you're interested in getting just a kit without purchasing anything, just email me and I'll send you a link in purchasing this. And if you do go on my online store, Just, you'll just use the host code that I'm showing here for July and add that in and I know that you're interested in receiving this um, kit as uh, um, to go with your purchase. Thank you guys for spending some time with me. I'll catch you on next Sunday. And let me just show you what next Sunday's class is gonna be about. So next Sunday's class, we're going to be featuring the stamp set. This is a bundle, the stamp set color and contour with its coordinating die scallop contours. And these are some gorgeous dies. I just love the dies on these. Okay. And I am going to be pairing that up with the hand pinned designer series paper and this designer series here i'll show you next sunday this is also 15 percent off and you get this bundle here is 10 percent off so we'll be featuring that next sunday here live at five i thank you guys for tuning in and this is claudette and i'll catch you guys on the next video